All right. So uh, now uh, let's actually change the uh, the main. So what I'm going to do in main is this now. So I'm saying marks before data entry. I'm going to print what the marks are. Then I'm going to say read ints a and five. I'm going to read five ints. Then I'm going to say print marks after data entry, and I'm going to print them out. Okay. So if I run this program now, it's going to show me the marks. Now, if you look at here, in here I'm saying percent D of percent D, then I'm showing A plus 1, then I'm showing the size. You see that? So it's actually saying data entry 1 of 5. So I'm actually showing. So it's going to be 22, 33, 44, 55, and 66. And when I hit enter, all the data are now updated properly in the array. So I can actually pass the name of an array to a function and modify it, put data in it, and do all the beautiful stuff that I can do. Are we okay with this? All right. So this will be 0, 2, array, I, O, in, funks, dot, C. Okay. Next thing is to make our code a little more elegant. Now that we know we can actually pass the entire, that's a wrong thing to say. I would say pass the entire information of an array into a function. That's, a, that's wrong. To pass address of an array and have, and have access to the entire array remotely, why we are actually writing stuff like that, the read ints is supposed to, uh, or, uh, uh, or print, uh, print, when you are printing contents of an array, you want to put a title at the top. So what you're printing, correct? So instead of doing that, instead of doing this and keep printing it like that, I can actually make my life easy. In here, I can say const character title. All right? And in here, I simply print the title. Printf, percent %s, and title. Correct? Now, doing so, I do not need to have a printf before that anymore. All I need to do, first I have to make the, make the, uh, tie, uh, the, what the devil did I do? Okay, copying is not my thing. Const character title like that. Okay, so now I can simply bring this and put it as the first element over here. And bring this one and put it as first element over here. And get rid of these two printf statements. Nice, right? And the same thing over here. Whenever I am actually uh, entering information, I need to put a label for my entry, or whatever you call it, a title for that one, or a prompt for that one. So that one, I'm going to call it a prompt. I'm going to say const character pointer prompt. And I'm going to pa somebody teach me how to type const. And I'm going to put that one right over here. OK? And now I can just put the prompt that I want to put over there right at the beginning of this one and get rid of that one. Now take a look. It makes the code much more elegant and easier to write and easier to reuse. I don't have to have a printf every single time. See, when you are writing a function, it's always difficult to make that function work for everything. You have to have lots of, you have to put lots of thought behind it. You have to lots of design behind it. But the goodness that you're taking out of it is much more. Every single time you are reusing that code, you got to be much more comfortably using it. So once you're going to put a printf in a function, you have to think, how do I put it? But after you've done with it, you're done with it, then there is no need for any more uh, uh, writing redundant code. So printf uh, percent %s and 
prompt. Okay? So now if I actually run this program, nothing is different. It actually works the exact same way. So I'm not going to bother run, running it. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is that the code is much more elegant now. Are we okay with this? All right. Next thing. If you write something like this, okay, in an interview, they know you don't know your stuff good. Why? What is the first, if somebody asks you, what is the first argument of printf? What would you answer? What is the type of the first argument in printf? It's a string, correct? You put it in literal, you actually put double quotes around it, right? So it's a constant string. It's a string that you can't change, right? It's a constant character string, is that correct? So what the heck I'm doing over here? Why am I putting this thing twice? That's it. Put this string right at the beginning. The first argument is a match. What is the difference of putting the prompt in there or putting the variable name in there? Same thing over here. What is the percent %s over here? It's already a string, so I'm going to say printf prompt. I'm not putting any values or arguments passing to it or anything like that. It's just the message that I want to print, right? Why do I need to put a percent %s over there? It's like having a sandwich like this. Just put it in your mouth directly. You don't need to turn it around your head. Directly done, right? Are we okay with this? All right. So if I run this again, no surprise, it's identical to, the, to what we had before. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay, sold. So that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the passing arrays to functions. We know exactly how to do it and when to make it a constant, when not to make it a constant. This is a title. In here, when you look at read ints, logic says prompt is just to display something. So it's not supposed to be a non-constant thing. I have to make it constant. And never ever go to somebody's says, but it works if I don't put constant. I know it works. You shouldn't. You know? It works if you walk naked in the street, but everyone's going to look at you like you're nuts, right? You have to. There are certain routines and protocols that you have to follow to be able to do something right. And this is what it is. These constants that we put behind the arguments, they are actually there to protect you not to have a bug by mistake. So when I told you constants protect you from yourself, that's absolute truth. Are we okay? All right. So, so in here I'm going to put 0, 3. Array IO in funks. Nice way. It's the same thing, I just brought the prompts in. Are we okay? All right. I know that we just started, but I want to give you a break, please. Go for a break, slap yourself in the face, and come back. And let me just, uh, please, when you're coming back, please remind me to resume recording. We can use the exact same thing that we are using for all variables. We've already talked about passing pointers to functions, and we saw that the whole purpose of a, of a pointer is to actually use the address of a variable and pass it to a function so a function can change stuff out of its own scope remotely. That was the whole idea. You had variables all over the place, you pass the addresses to, to a function, now the function have address, access to the address, uh, using the address have access to the original value and can change its value if the pointer is not constant. We just learned that today. We can do the exact same thing to actually get information for, uh, 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 set, uh, set the information and access uh, information of inside that, that are hidden inside a uh, structure. So let's just review it by doing it with regular variables as we did before. So we're going to have that int main thingy that we had just to have a quick review 
on pointers. Eek. Um, <clears throat> we said that, um, so let's actually put over here. Pardon me? Yeah, that's, no. Intellis is, 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 sometimes doesn't catch up that quickly. So, so I'm going to create a double value called D. And we know that we can actually create a function uh, to access the uh, a variable remotely, like read double. I'm using the exact same thing, so I'm putting constant character prompt. And by the way, one thing, pause. Let's go back. I have to mention something that I forgot. Save. Let's open the last thing that we talked about. In here, you see that I actually am passing arrays over here, but we know body, right? And we mentioned that picture thingy that I drew, if you recall, that we actually mentioned that when we are having an array somewhere, the array that we have is essentially uh, a piece of memory that is somewhere, and a single array is actually a single pointer is actually pointing to it. And we said that's how an array works, right? Now the single thing over here is a pointer pointing to that one. What's the difference between a pointer? pointing to an individual variable and a pointer that points to 5,000 things in memory. Can anybody tell me? No difference. Same. The address of a house and address of a building, they're the same. At the target, something else is sitting. We know that for a fact, right? But for arrays, that's not the case. Because there are a series of stuff sitting in the memory, and we simply go to next, 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 and keep going like that. So essentially, name of an array is literally a pointer. It doesn't make any difference if you have 5,000 things over there or five things. We know that for a fact, because we, are have, we have to pass the size to a function to be able to access all the stuff, right? Because of that, the concept between an array being passed to a function and a pointer passed to a function are interchangeable. They are literally the same, which means if I did like this, it is literally same. No difference whatsoever. And you can pass an array using a single pointer. It works. It doesn't make any difference. So instead of having integer array to read, I can just pass an integer pointer. The same. And in here, where is it? So which ones? Let me just change them all. Let me just clear that thing. So in here, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to put in constant character, constant integer pointer, and so on and so forth. So they're all changed. In here, the same thing. So if I actually do this, and I run it, you will see there is absolutely no difference. I don't need to change any notation, anything like that. A pointer is an array. An array, the, sorry, name of an array is a pointer, and a pointer can be a name of an uh, can be name of, name of an array. It does not make any difference. So when I do like this, I do not need to change this notation. They are identical. Are we okay with this? Is this preferred other than the square bracket? No. no, whichever you like. But don't forget, you can create a pointer using a pointer notation by itself. But you cannot use that notation to create an array unless you provide the body of the array for it. What I mean is that I cannot do this. Where is it? So uh, let me just save this as a new thing. So I'm going to say over here, 0. Did I have? I didn't have a 4, did I? 0, 4, so it's array. I O in funks uh, pointer notation. Let's see. So I just want to make sure that uh, I'm not changing the other one. So uh, what I say is this: y you can have, you can do this. Oh, that's good, but you cannot do this. 
unless you provide a body for it, unless you actually say, now you can. That actually becomes, it means I'm too lazy to write three, so I'm just writing that. So, and so how come, if that's the case, how come I could do this in a function with no problem? If you go back to what I taught before, early in the semester, early when I was talking about arrays and passing it to a functions, uh, sorry, when I was talking about functions and arguments being passed to it, I said every argument of a function is initialized to the value that is passed to it. Remember that? Every argument of the function is initialized to the, to the value that is passed to it. So when you write it like this, essentially it's being initialized to this, which is very much allowed. It's as if you are doing character S, character str and you, and you do this and then you say hee haw. Because at the moment of calling, the, the, the argument is being initialized to something, you're fine. And that's why you can use that notation for it. Otherwise, we had to use pointer notation. Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? All right, that's something that you need to know. So I'm just going to remove uh, these, not to confuse you. You can just listen to it or watch the video later on and see what I did. But so this is the pointer notation. Uh, let me just remove this and put it back the way it was. Save. And now let's go back over here. So now when I'm writing this read double, we know that the prompt that is being passed to it is essentially an array and it's printing the prompt and then scans it into DP. Why I don't have ampersand beside it? Because DP is already an address. I do not need to extract the address using the address operator as the ampersand. Because I don't need to do that, I can do it like this, right? And if I want to print a double, I can do the exact same thing. So I can actually have something like this. Print double. And instead of prompt, I'm going to say over here label because you put a label for a single value. You put a prompt for, OK? So and I can even leave that thing as a, as a, as a pointer. Why? Because I can't. just want to show off that I know how to use pointers. There's no need for it. You can pass it by value, but you could do that. So I'm going to here say label. And in here, I'm going to say stupid compiler. OK, so, so in here now, I can say printf. And in here, I'm going to say the target of double pointer. I made it a constant. Why? Because I want to print it. Now, is there an advantage, or I just wanted to show off that I know pointers? I have a question. What is the size of an array, uh, a double? Um, no? So throw out numbers, 192, 64. What is size of a double in bytes? Eight, thank you very much. Eight bytes, correct? OK, when we were talking about pointers, we said pointers are actually what? They are a special type of integers. Remember that? So a pointer is essentially an integer. Now, what is size of an integer? Four, correct? So to have access to an eight-byte thing, I passed a four-byte thing to a function. I saved four bytes of transfer of information. So it's good, actually. Although I showed off over here that I can actually use pointers, but using the pointer of a double, I save time. Right? I'm not copying it, because if I copy it, first it has to create, occupy eight bytes. And then after occupying eight bytes, you have to transfer eight bytes from the target into destination to be able to show it. I don't have that anymore. First of all, I'm creating a fourth byte thing, and I'm copying only an address, so I'm done. Are we OK with this? All right. But there is a problem in here, people. And what is that problem? The problem is, oh, wait, 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 wait. In here now, I actually, see, this is printf label is not good. In here, I understand that I'm doing like that. But over here, it's just bad. 
because I'm doing a label, I can simply write over here percent %s. In here, it's good to actually have it like that and put a, a column over here and then put over here label. In here, it's a good thing to put percent %s because I'm actually showing stuff inside. Uh, so I want to have a format. But there's a problem in here. The problem is that when you are printing a double, the precision is something that is important for us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many doubles sitting in a target? Pardon? How many doubles are sitting in a target of DP? Uh, How many characters are sitting in a target of label? Many. many. So percent %s is not printing one thing. It's actually a loop. There's actually a loop inside the printf printing the things one by one until it gets to the null. That's why it needs the address. Okay. If I pass the target, it, it's going to only print one character. Okay. All right? All right. So, so printf, so that's going to print the label, and then it's going to print that LF thingy over there, right? This is something that we're going to teach next. I don't think it's even in your notes, but it's good to know. I want to have different types of precision over here. Like when it's a double, if you are printing pi, it was yesterday. And by the way, Stephen Hawkins died, right? Very sad. Poor guy. Anyways. Brilliant guy. So um, back to the thing. So pi, if I want to print pi, I, I need to see you as a, a 3, 1, 4. I, 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 I've memorized this in Persian. I cannot say it in English, believe it or not. So because I studied math in Persian, not in English. So anyways, but if I want to have like five uh, digits after the decimal point, it's a different type of printing. But if I want to print the money, then two digits is, is enough, right? So if that's the case, my function should be able to change the precision. How can I do that? In here, I'm actually saying what? 0.2 to be 2, 0.5 to be 5, 0.10 to be 10 after the thing, right? Actually, there's a possibility. You can simply put a star over there and then put the star in a, as a sequence of things that are being passed. So, so what happens over here is this. So this, this label is going where? This label is going into S, right? The target of DP is going into LF, right? So now I need, between these two, I need to provide something to go to that star thingy. So what I will do over here is this. I'm going to say int precision. And in here, I'm going to say precision. So now what I have will be this. Label will go to this. Precision will go to star and DP will go into LF. Now when I want to actually print the double, I can actually tell how many digits after the decimal point I can print. OK, that's a good thing to know. All right, so clear all. Now we can actually demonstrate the thing by saying something like, uh, so I can actually do something like this, say, uh, read double. Oh, 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 I forgot something extremely important. That is. And put a semicolon over here and a semicolon over here. All right. Pardon me? No. It's coming in through argument list. Why initialize? Oh, we'll see. Give, it, give me a second. So in here, I'm going to say read double. And I'm going to say over here GPA. So I want to actually say print. A read job, and that's that's gonna be the uh, the prompt for it. And then after that, I'm gonna put address of D. So I'm actually reading the double, right? Then I'm gonna say print double. In here, I'm gonna say entered GPA. And then on here, I'm gonna say address of D. Pass that one, and I want to be only one digit after the decimal point. And it's done. So what happens when I actually call this, it's going to get the GPA, 
with the scanf thingy then it's going to call this please passes enter gpa so it's going to print enter gpa column then it's going to pass one so it becomes point one lf and lf will be the number that is being passed did i put it reverse no that's correct and then the precision and life is beautiful so if i run this beautiful program of mine this is what i am going to get gpa is 3.58 and i hit enter and i'm going to say entered gpa 3.6 because it rounds it when i put when i put one i forgot to put a backslash n over there so let's put that one in here one more time control f5 so one more time 3.58 and it's gonna print 3.6. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. So that's that one. Now, the next thing I can do over here is to deal with the student thingy. Now, if I want to actually read the student in a function, what do I need to do? I need to pass that, the address of that structure into a function. So what I need to do, the product of the, of the function should be something like this. So I'm saying read student, and I'm passing a pointer of type student into the function. Okay? Now, inside the function, when I want to actually read that, how do I deal with it? So let's do it. So I'm going to say over here, I'm not going to use read double over there. I'm just going to write scanf and uh, different scanfs just uh, to be able to teach something over here. So this is going to be the function. Whenever you have the prototype, you give a body to it. Okay. Now you can just compile it, control F7 to see if it works. Everything's fine. Now you start implementing it. So now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say actually uh, student number. So, so I'm going to say printf student number. And I'm going to go scan f, okay? I'm reading an integer. That's the student number, right? Now in here, it's supposed to be address of. Okay, but what do I put over here? So I have the pointer, correct? So that's, that's, S, that's st. So let's take that address off for now. So I'm going to say st. Now, I have to go to the target of st, correct? To be able to gain access to the content, so I'm going to put an asterisk. With, I'm going to put an asterisk beside it. Then in here, I'm going to say dot student number. Dot student number. Okay, but problem is that dot over here is much stronger than asterisk. The priority is higher. So how compiler is going to deal with it is like this. But because st is not the name of a structure, that's going to fail. You have to enforce the compiler to apply the asterisk first, which means you have to do it like this. Now you actually gained access to the student number of the st. So you are saying the structure itself, its student number, now give me its address and that will work perfectly, okay? And you can do that for all the other stuff that we have to. So, so in here, what do I have? So the first one is IPC, so I'm gonna say IPC 144 mark, and in here I'm gonna say percent LF, and I'm gonna get the IPC mark, right? Then in here, I'm going to say ULI. The other one is ULI. What is ULI thingy? ULI 101. So ULI 101. Um, and then in here, I'm going to again put LF. And in here, it's going to be ULI. And finally, I have EAC 150 that I know. EAC 150. And I'm going to put over here LF. 
and it's going to be EAC mark. Now, the problem is that there are so many things to type over here. So the C people said, the heck with it. I'm not going to do this. Whenever you want to gain access to a structure using the address of it, instead of printing five, typing four things over here, just use an arrow as if you are doing it on a paper. So you say the student pointer that goes, that points to the structure, through that go get to the student. So this arrow actually says from this pointer get to the student, so I don't have to go through all this. And the good thing is that that arrow thingy over here takes over first, and because of that, the address gets applied later, so the address actually gets applied to the address of SDNO, not the structure itself, which is beautiful. So everything works perfectly for me. So whenever you want to deal with an address of a structure, always use the arrow. I'll leave the rest over there for you just as a reminder that there are two different notations to access this thing, and that was one. And I can actually print a student the exact same way, so I can actually have ac uh, write a function to print the information of a student, the same thing using the, the address of it, but make sure you make that address a constant. Because you're printing it, you want to make sure you don't change it. So it works the exact same way. Again, it's better to use the arrow, but if you want to use the, the regular notation for it, that's fine too. You just have to type lots of crazy stuff. Are we okay with this? So like this, I can actually read and print the student mark, uh, the uh, uh, structure perfectly with, with absolutely no problem. Are we okay with this? Now, few concepts, uh, are we okay? I'm going to actually open up the thing and talk about a few concepts that are uh, talked about in here. Prototypes, you know, we talked about it. You know exactly what it is. Include, you know what it is. Scope. Now, in here we're saying global scope, function scope, local scope, block scope. People, whatever you have open curly bracket, that open curly bracket has a corresponding closed curly bracket. That scope is a scope. If it's in front of a function, it's a function. If it's in front of a, a while loop, it's inside a function, so it's an inner thingy, okay? So whenever you know at the beginning of every and each scope, you can create variables. When you do that, the end of that scope is the end of the life of that variable. So if you have an if statement inside a function and you create a variable inside the if statement, as soon as the closed curly bracket of if statement comes, that variable is gone. Bye-bye. You can't access it. The problem is that what if I have a variable inside a function and then inside an if inside that function, I have the exact same name used. If I'm in an if statement, I have an integer i. And inside the function, I have an integer i. In the if statement, when I say i is set to 5, which i I'm talking about? The answer is that the closest one. The other one is hidden. You can't access it anymore. Essentially, if you use the same variable inside an inner scope, the outer scope is going to be hidden because of that. All right? It's a fact that you need to know. Now, going through these things. Oh, and a global scope. If you create a variable outside of your, of your functions, outside of every, so in here, if I say int sum, if I do something like that, that integer becomes visible because it's the outer scope to all the functions in that file only and nowhere else. So the term global is wrong. If you have three files in your project, the next file has no idea what is sum. If you create an integer sum in there, that integer sum in the other file is a completely different variable with the same name with this one. That sum is not the same as this one. There is a way to make them all the same. So if you have five different things, five different files, and you want to have a global variable between all for some reason, you can do that. But that's way above our pay grade. Okay, so we don't know it. We're going to find that in OP345 how to do that. But for now, just remember, whenever you hear global, it's not really global. It's 
to that file. You're getting to do both? In run? Okay. Don't worry. Well, uh, I have one more minute. Okay. So today I'm, I'm picking on you, my friend. Today is you're the, the, the go-to person for me today. No, you don't deserve it, my friend. You are a very good student of mine, and I don't want to do any harm other than embarrassing you in front of everyone. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Uh, so. So that's that. Uh, what is the next thing that we want to talk about? We, we may have one couple of more minutes standing over here. It doesn't matter. So go through these things to see what does it mean. And this is exactly what he was talking about. See, we have an integer x over here. That's in foo. And I have an integer x over here. So if I use that x, then this x is overwritten. We don't care about that. Passing arrays we know. Array arguments we know. Uh, passing structures we know. Pass by value. You know, pass by address, you know. We have no such thing as pass by reference in C language. Pass by reference in C++, we have no such thing. So when somebody says pass by reference in C, they actually means pass by value. Okay? Or pass by pointer, I don't know. Because we don't have it, you can interpret it anything you want. Okay? <clears throat> pass by value. Pass by address. Efficiency, we talked about it. So when I'm passing a pointer, Always, 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 always try to pass a structure using a pointer. Why? Because the pointer is only four. Remember that student thingy? I had three doubles. Three multiplied by eight, that's 24. Plus four for an integer, 28 bytes I had to pass if I pass it by value. Bad thing. So it's always better to use a constant pointer if you don't want to change it, or a regular pointer if you want to change it. Okay? That's the efficiency. Arrow notation we know. Style we know, we talked about it 50,000 times. Struct walkthrough, yada, yada, yada. Any questions? Man, it's a good thing that I had all the code I didn't have to type, so I just brought everything. So we finished everything with one minute over. The, yes, sir? So arrays can't be passed by value No, it's absolutely impossible. You can. Tell me how. I give five marks for your, add five marks to your test, 5% to your test, if you tell me how can I pass an, an array by value. No, no, no. You know how. Hmm? No. In one shot. No. That's still, you're passing the address, it's just not modifiable. By, by value. So when I pass it, all 50 things pass by. Goes into an array. It goes into a function. Put it in a structure. Ta-da. Pass the structure and the array goes. Put it in a structure. Okay. <laughs> all right. Are we okay? All right. Thank you. Have yourself a beautiful day.